Hello everyone, in this video, I'll talk about the toolbar and the buttons I've been using to control the debugging process. So, let's get started. The buttons I'm referring to are on the toolbar right here, but there is something I need to correct. In my how to make MPLAB dark mode video, I said to enable debug option by right clicking on the toolbar. You don't actually need to do that. If I deselect the debug toolbar and start debugging, you'll see the debug toolbar appear anyways. So MPLAB automatically places the debug toolbar when starting a debug session. But I don't like that the overall toolbar changes drastically whenever I start debugging. So I'll keep the debug toolbar normally enabled anyways. In that video, I also talked about how to customize your toolbar, so I'll skip explaining that here. You can watch that video if something confuses you. Now, there are a couple more changes I want to make. First, I'll go ahead and remove this button, which is the Step Over Expression button. That button doesn't seem to be supported since it's always greyed out, and none of the related documents reference it. In fact, if you start debugging, you'll see that it disappears. And if you try to manually add it, it just doesn't place, so I'll just remove it. There is also another button I'd like to add, which I find myself using a lot, which is the disassembly button. This is the same button I've been using in previous videos right here, to open up the assembly equivalent of my code, though I can't use it right now since I'm not in a debug session. There are a lot more buttons here, but most of them are redundant or not supported, so I'll only talk about the most common ones here. You're of course free to look up and add them to your own toolbar. Before we talk about the buttons, keep in mind that some of the buttons or the breakpoints may seem clunky at times. This is because whenever you do something related to debugging, MPLAB has to communicate with your debugger, and your debugger has to communicate with the microcontroller, and possibly all the way back again, so don't expect things to be snappy. Again, I'll use the same example code I've been using in this series. Let's start a debug session. Since I have the debug startup configured as run, which I talked about in my first video, my microcontroller just keeps running. The buttons you can use will light up or grey out depending on the status of your microcontroller. Since the microcontroller is running right now, I can't use the reset, run or other stepping buttons, which I'll get to shortly. Let's get the simple buttons out of the way first. You can terminate the debugging session by pressing this button. And when the microcontroller is running, you can press this button to asynchronously halt the microcontroller. Now, when you halt like this, the program will automatically center your screen on the program counter's location, and open the file it's in if it's not open. You'll see this file named awdiv open up that I didn't write. What's up with that? My microcontroller actually happened to halt on the division line here, even though you can't see the program counter on this file. Now, division is not directly done in hardware for this microcontroller. Instead, it's done using an algorithm. This file is generated by MPLAB, which houses a function that handles the division operations. MPLAB automatically inserts this code into my project and uses it whenever there's a division operation. But since this code is located in a separate file, when the program counter points here after I halt, MPLAB ends up opening it. In fact, the microcontroller will likely always halt in this file, since division here takes much much longer than any other code I've got in this project. If you use this button to halt, you'll see a lot of random files open up, especially if you use a lot of standard C library functions, which refers to the functions added by these libraries. You've probably seen them a lot if you've taken a C tutorial. When halted, you can use the reset button here to reset the debugging session, and the program counter will point to the next line after the main function. And you can use the continue button here to make the microcontroller rerun when halted. Now, before we talk about the other buttons, I'll quickly halt somewhere in my main file. I'll also go ahead and open up the assembly file using the button we added. And I'll also open up the program memory window. The reason is that some of these buttons behave differently on different tabs, which I want to show. First button is step over. This button will execute one line of your C code like this and halt. Pretty simple. And it won't behave differently in the other tabs. You may expect it to execute a single instruction, but it won't. It'll just execute all instructions until it hits another C line. Next button is Step Into. This button mostly behaves the same as the previous one. 
it'll execute one line of your C code. But let me put a breakpoint here and halt. If I press step over, you'll see that I step over these function calls. However, if you use step into, you'll instead step into the function call as the name suggests. If your function resides in another file, MPLAB will automatically open that too. Now, this button behaves differently in the assembly file. When the assembly file is selected, it'll instead execute a single instruction, like this. There actually is a dedicated button you can add called step instruction, which will do the same thing. It'll also step a single instruction even if you have the C file selected, but it doesn't really make sense to step an instruction in the C file when you can't even see the instructions. And the step into button will do the same task when the assembly file is selected, so I don't really see a reason to add this button. Also, the program memory window doesn't affect this button's operation. It only steps through instructions if you have the assembly file selected. The next button is step out. This button is supposed to be the opposite of step into, where instead of going into a function call, it will halt after exiting the current function call. But you'll see that it's grayed out. It seems that Picket3 doesn't support this button for whatever reason, so unfortunately we can't use it here, but that's okay since it's not that important of a button anyways. The next button is Run to Cursor. This button will run the microcontroller until it hits your cursor, then halt. When I say cursor, I mean the currently selected line in your file, so if I select here, the microcontroller will run until it hits this line. Now, the debugger is not setting the program counter to this location. It's just letting the microcontroller run until it hits this line. So, if I select this line and press run to cursor, you'll see that it halted on this breakpoint instead. If the microcontroller hits another breakpoint before it makes it to the cursor location, it'll halt as well. So, you can imagine this button to be placing a temporary breakpoint in your cursor location, then running your microcontroller, and automatically removing the breakpoint when halted. If the assembly file is selected, this button will instead work on instruction level. So if I put my cursor on an instruction on the assembly file and press the button, you'll see that we halted on this instruction. It also works the same on program memory window. If I choose a line here and press the button, we halted on that line. Though this window is a little buggy with the buttons. As you saw, when I clicked on the line, it didn't show any indications, but it still selected that line. Also, you can see a breakpoint placed here, which I'll talk about in a bit. That breakpoint shouldn't be there after halting, and you can see that we're still only using one breakpoint, but it still remains on screen, so it's a little buggy. The next button is set PC at cursor. This button will overwrite the program counter to the cursor address. So if I put my cursor here and press the button, you'll see that the program counter is set to this line. Now, be careful when using this button. Depending on which address you set to, your program may get corrupted. If you change the program counter to the middle of an operation, the program may get corrupted since you're overriding the program counter, but not restarting the microcontroller or running the instructions in between. Not to mention, you may disrupt the hardware return stack completely if you change the program counter in the middle of a function call or to a function call, so do be careful. This button also works in both the assembly file and the program memory window. In assembly file, you can just select the instruction to set your program counter to, and set it. You can do the same in the program memory window as well, though again, the screen won't show any indications of selecting a line, but it will select it. The next and last button for this video is focus cursor at PC. This button will place your cursor on the program counter. So if I put my cursor somewhere else and scroll down and press this button, you'll see that it placed my cursor on the program counter and centered it on screen. This is useful for multi-file projects where you may wander off to another file and want to easily get back to your halt location. This button will also open closed files. If I close this main file and press the button again, you'll see that MPLAB automatically opened the file too. This button will not work on the assembly file. It'll instead go to the C file the program counter is in. It will, however, work on the program memory window. The window will go to the program counter and center it on screen. Before ending this video, I want to talk about how these buttons work, as there are some limitations you need to be aware of caused by the way they're implemented. These buttons aren't implemented in hardware. 
Instead, MPLAB automatically adds temporary breakpoints to the relevant addresses to implement their functionalities. So, for example, pressing the step over button will essentially cause MPLAB to find the first instruction that corresponds to the next C line and place a breakpoint there, then run the microcontroller, and finally remove that breakpoint after halting. And you also saw how run the cursor button seemed a little buggy in the program memory window, and we could see the address breakpoint being placed down. Now, because of this, some of these buttons will require a free breakpoint to function. Remember the last video, and how we got a warning if we tried to place the third and last breakpoint down. If I do that now, you can see, MPLAB tells us that only one breakpoint is available, and that some of the debug operations will be disabled. If I place it down and try to use some of these buttons, you'll see that the operation fails, and MPLAB complains about no breakpoints being available. For this microcontroller, this isn't a huge issue, but for older and cheaper microcontrollers that has only one breakpoint to begin with, these operations are a huge pain in the ass to use, since you have to remove the only breakpoint you've placed to be able to use these operations. And that's the end of the video, and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe, it's always appreciated, and I'll see you in the next video.